Hello, my name's Fiona Hill. I'm one of the ear, nose and throat surgeons here at Melbourne ENT Group. I specialise in problems and surgeries of the ear and of hearing. I'm here today to discuss with you implantable hearing devices. So what is an implantable hearing device? There are a number of types of implantable hearing devices. Most people have heard of a cochlear implant. That's the one I'm going to discuss today. The way that we hear is that sound goes into our ear, into the little organ called the cochlea, where there are a number of small hair cells that pick up that sound, amplify it, and send it into our hearing nerve. Some children are born without hair cells that work. Uh, some adults, as we get older, find that their hair cells get more and more damaged. For many people, a hearing aid is able to amplify the sound given to those hair cells, but for some, the damage is too great, and that's where a cochlear implant comes in. So the advantages of a cochlear implant is slightly different depending on if you're talking to a child or an adult. Overall, the benefit of a cochlear implant is that it can take people who have got severe to profound hearing loss, who aren't benefiting from a hearing aid, and are getting them hearing properly again. So for a infant or a child born without hearing, if we can get an implant in soon enough, we actually know that we can pretty much replace all of the hearing that they were born without. Um, what this means is in studies, we know that these children can perform similar to their hearing peers um, throughout high school, throughout university, um, and that they're able to function for most children, just as everybody else in the community. For adults, it slightly depends on how long they've had hearing loss or why they got hearing loss. But in general, uh, most adults with age-related hearing loss find that their hearing aid just isn't strong enough anymore. Uh, for these patients, we get them back communicating with their family. They can even often communicate in noisy environments. Many of them can even get such good communication that they're able to talk on the phone again. Well, it does require an operation, um, which I think of as a medium-sized operation. You'll normally spend two to four hours under an anaesthetic and you'll either go home the same day or the next day. It does require you to wear a hearing aid on the outside, it's slightly different than a normal hearing aid, but it has the microphone that allows us to pick up sound and a lot of the computer work that helps that electrode um, process the sound. The type of hearing that you get with a cochlear implant is slightly different than a hearing aid. Um, a hearing aid just turns up the volume, so normally you just need to put it on and switch it on and most people get a lot of benefit from it. But with a cochlear implant, uh, the sound is slightly different and it can take the brain um, some months, even up to a year, to fully get the most out of a cochlear implant. And that can require a few appointments with our audiologists and with the surgical team. Um, but for most people, they find that a cochlear implant becomes something that they can't live without. There are many patients that would benefit from a cochlear implant. Um, we actually know that at the moment um, in all of Melbourne we've only implanted 5% of the patients that would actually benefit from it. That there are many people with quite advanced hearing loss, um, especially um, older pa patients, um, that would get much better hearing with a cochlear implant. Um, the main people that would benefit from a child point of view is children that have been identified in their newborn hearing screen with hearing problems that can't be um, resolved with a normal hearing aid. Um, some very young children get picked up when their speech and language doesn't develop in the way that it should and they've trialed hearing aids that don't work. Uh, for adults, it's normally adults who've had hearing aids that find that they're just not strong enough anymore. Signs that you may benefit or one of your family member may benefit from a, from a cochlear implant would be if even with a hearing aid on, they're struggling to communi communicate, they feel that people are mumbling, they are asking people to repeat themselves a lot, they're struggling in noisy environments, uh, if they are unable to communicate over the telephone, um, if they're starting to withdraw from, from social interactions or become more isolated because of their hearing problems. Um, definitely all of those patients should get assessed for consideration of a cochlear implant or some form of new hearing device. Uh, what makes me an expert in um, implantable hearing aids? Uh, so in addition to the time that I've spent here um, as a doctor in Melbourne and also uh, training here in Melbourne, I've spent time in the United Kingdom, 
um, working with some of their largest implant centres. Uh, I worked for some time at Guys and St Thomas and Evelina, um, which are both adult and children hospitals uh, that uh, excel in putting in cochlear implants and all forms of implantable hearing devices. So through my work with them, I've got um, expert experience in helping thousands of patients through the whole process um, from deciding if they actually need a cochlear implant um, or if they need something else, um, from deciding what sort of cochlear implant that they would need and then actually performing the operation. Um, in London, I helped perform and performed hundreds of these operations. So um, I can help patients at every step of the way. And here at the Melbourne ENT Group, we have um, expert audiologists that can help assess your hearing, help assess hearing aids or give hearing aids, and can help decide if a cochlear implant could potentially be for you. Um, I'm also very happy to see any patients um, that would like to discuss cochlear implants further directly. Um, so please don't have, hesitate uh, to contact us and make an appointment. Thanks.